Hello, this is Sophia Johnson, and today I will be presenting my research to GUI, which is a um, continued work for my midterm GUI. So these are the instructions when you go into the folder, it's here, it um, basically tells you how to open it and how to run the code and what functions are inside there. So for, I will tell you like for here, you just go to the scenes, you open up cat generator scene, research v2, and So I will start with a completely new tab, Python, and for here you need to go to scripts, open up research project 2, and copy and paste everything inside. And then afterwards you run execute all. And it will pop up this menu, which you need to go to the images folder and choose everything based on the name. So the <coughs> is first like ear, head, leg, tail, then the icons. So after you select all and open up, this is the GUI, which there are three tabs, the modeling, coloring, and rigging. I did a lot on formatting the GUI for the Research 2 project, and also I added the rigging tab. So compared to the midterm GUI, these are still the same, the modeling and the coloring, only that I added the undo and redo icon, which is used for every single tab. And this is the default model you have, which you can change by clicking these types. So like these icons, so it will change to the tail you would like. And you can also change the leg length, the arm length, and the body thickness. And also you can curve the tail to make it up and down. So you can also color it. So like give it a very red one, or maybe a base color. Like this, a hat. Um, this doesn't have a hat this and if I were to proceed to the rigging tab I need to check this box to make sure I want to lock the modeling area and proceed to the rigging so when I press it it will say you are now in rigging mode and if we go back to modeling tab you will find that there's a button that says you have already agreed to adopting your current cat. Do not make it sad. However, if you want to go back, you can do so by clicking this and it will say, are you sure? You want to like change your cat features? So you, and I say like, yes, I do not like my cat anymore. And the modeling tab will resume from being muted. So in. And also, like this box, it will be unchecked again. If you want to do it again, well, it's now muted, so you can't do anything. And if you say, no, let me consider again, nothing will happen. Okay. So if I go to the rigging tab, after I do this, I lock the modeling, and then I, the first step unlocks. So to help users to um, proceed with the rigging tab, I've set it so that each stage is unlocked when you complete the previous stage. So for the first stage, it will tell you to go to bind pose and unbind tail joints. So you need to unbind all the joints and then like reposition them obviously if you want to um, make
make it a better rig. If I do this, it will resume the bind pose and also the tail there. And this step one will be um, muted um, after you click this. However, you can unlock this if you, for whatever reason, you want to um, unlock this again and use it. It will tell you to unlock step one, but it won't undo like what you've already did. If you want to undo the bind pose, you need to click under here to undo redo, in which then so it will be um, binded again. So if you do it again, yeah, it will say your cat is now in binding pose. And do you want to clean your cat now? So with cleaning the cat, this refers to stage two, which is to delete all history and freeze transformation. So if you press this directly, it will select all of the objects that are currently live, and then it will um, um, do what's given. <laughs> So if I press, and also it will unlock the next stage, because usually if you've done that, you're ready to go to the next step. So if I press this, like this will be locked, and it will say, if successful, it will say you have cleaned your cat, while your cat tries to struggle him out. <laughs> well, if you want to do something else, like you want to unlock this again, here's the button that will have appeared. So this will be, um, um, this will be, like, um, usable again. That's like, if I want to undo, I go back here, I select all. This is the other icons for, like, selecting everything that's live. And to, um, talk more specifically about how this works is that because, like, if you notice, like, all of my objects here, even though they seem like they're not on the screen, they're actually visible. So what I did is to query the visible status of the layers here, and if it is um, visible, if it's true, it will return. Um, it, I, there will be a command run to determine that I want to select um, the objects within these layers that are visible. So if I deselect, it deselects everything that I currently have. If I want to delete history, like if you've got nothing selected and you delete history of nothing, the warning will pop up to say that you need to select your cat before doing stuff on it. Like, I try to make it more fun for the user because it's like a cat builder. So if you select all and delete history, it will say that your cat is scrubbed, but maybe it also needs to be dried. So dried means refers to freeze transformation. And if you do so, freeze transformations, it will say like your cat has been dried. But to be, because some users say first, do perform the transformation step and not do the his delete history first. Um, to make sure um, this warning tab is here to ask if you've done that or not. And if you did either of them, the icon appeared to say that, you know, like unlock the next stage or not. And because I've already clicked this that unlock these stages, like, um, um, you don't need to, like, unlock it again. But if you were first to do any, perform any actions of delete history or freeze transformation by themselves, these icons will pop up and this, um, window will not, um, will remain muted. So, in step three, this is the more important part where you need to determine um, the joints of the cat in the locator and then try to um, and then link them. I haven't um, been able yet to do the linking stage. However, I have done this automated process to determine um, 
each position for the um, joints so that they could give a um, good base which the users can then like do more um, changing positions by using these icons like to go up, down, left or right like on the XYZ axis and so I want to try this first I put down a locator and let's say you place the locator and to see it better well it is there It's here. And if you want to move it by the GUI, you can put it, make it up, which it will translate up five. And if you perform it for more than two times, the um, default value for um, changing distance will slow down to give you a better precisization. So it's now going by two to see like, um, to make the locator go where you want to. And if you do any action inside the rigged um, tab, for example, like clicking on any of these buttons or doing undo redo, this will reset the, um, def reset the value for moving, changing directions, and it will re become the default five. Okay, and if you double click this, it will like go by eight. So it will move by eight. And this is like four X, to go back. And to make it clear what X, Y, Z means inside uh, Maya, I've also placed some image showing this. To make it easier for the user to use. Okay, so automatic generate joint points is something that I've tried a lot of, like, I spent a lot of time trying to do this. And what it does is that it puts, it generates joints that are all in the name of the um, position and also it will determine the position by looking out for the bound boxes of each object. For example, if I were to generate the leg joint and it's like on the right side, what the code do does is that it will determine the bound box of this leg. It will show like it will um, calculate the like points for like of its like existence and then what I did is that I did a math calculation to um, position like where these locations would be like by their bound box value so each of these are um, all separately calculated by the body part they belong to and would generate it to give a good base for users to um, adjust. And I am now in the still in the testing mode to um, make ready for skinning and uh, which it will add pa parent constraints to um, each joint. So if I use the tail joint as an example, if I select all of them and then I press this, it will generate the parent constraints for each of them. And this will be helpful for the later IKFK um, when you um, need to use it. And also, I've put in button for like combined body mesh for a cat, but um, for in reality, I haven't like gone on to doing it yet. So that's all. Thank you.